Hello friends, this video on probability part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We will study probability. In probability, we will study the introduction part. We will study a new topic called conditional probability. We will study multiplication theorem on probability. We will study events type called independent events. We will introduce a new theorem called Bayes theorem. We will talk about random variables and its probability distribution. We will also talk about Bernoulli's trials and binomial distributions. Before we start the chapter, let's do a recap of what we already know on probability. We know that measure of uncertainty of various phenomena is nothing but probability. That is what a probability is all about. So when you say what is probability, you have uncertainty, uncertainty, you throw a coin, you may get a head, you may get a tail, right? There's uncertainty there. So in, in the, those kind of scenarios, we want to find what is the uncertainty of getting a head or tail, such kind of scenarios we use probability. We also know the formula that probability is nothing but number, number of favorable outcome by total number of outcomes. These things we already know, so I'm just doing a recap. We also know that there are various approach to probability. One is a statistical approach where we actually collect data. For example, we want to find the probability of getting head or tail in throw of let's suppose 100, 100 toss. We actually do 100 toss. We toss the coins 100 times and we get the data. For example, we got let's suppose 49 head, 51 tail. Then we'll say the probability of getting head was 49 by total number of toss that is 100 and probability of uh, tail is 51 by total number of toss 100. This is one approach, the, the crude approach, but this is uh, very difficult because every time you don't have option to collect data and sometimes the number is huge, it's a cumbersome process. We have a classical approach where we deal only with equal probable events. For example, you have you throw a coin and you get head and tail, both are equal probable. Such kind of scenarios we use a uh, classical approach, but these two approach it doesn't fit for real life scenarios where we have non-equal probable events also. And thus we have axiomatic approach. We have studied all these kind of approaches in our previous classes and these axiomatic approach is more uh, inclined to the real life events. And here we deal generally with the set theory. We formulate a, a set of the total events and then we formulate the set of the event we are looking for and then we find the probability. These kind of things we have done actually. So I just brush upon on this. And one example was that for the axiomatic approach was if you have a committee of uh, two person has to be selected from three men or four women, then we have to find the committee which has no men. So in that case, you no, know, you have this, we create a set, right, of possible scenarios of selecting two person uh, from this, um, committee right we say men one men two can be selected men one men three can be selected or women one women two can be selected men one women three all the possible scenarios we write here and then we write the scenarios where there is no men right this is the total scenario and this is scenario we are looking for right so let's suppose this guy has uh, x element and this guy has let's suppose y elements right then we see the probability of this case was y by x that is how we deal with the axiomatic approach. And these things we have already done in the past classes. So if you have doubts in this, please watch my previous probability chapters. I think for the class 11th and 10th, you can, where we have discussed all these approaches. And we also know what is sample space and sample outcome. This is generally used for the axiomatic approach where we have this uh, uh, sets. So sample space is nothing but the set of all possible outcomes for the random experiment. For example, when you throw a coin, you get a head or tail. So this is my sample space. And sample point is, uh, each point is called sample point. This guy is, this guy is, each point is called sample point. For example, the toss of coin, as I told, uh, this guy, you know, head and tail is my sample space and each of these points, head and tail is sample points. These things we already know. We'll define event also because we will learn a new topic called independent event. Event is nothing but set of favorable outcome. Favorable outcome is called event. 
For example, you throw a coin, you are looking for head, then your head is the event actually. So that's the favorable outcome. Also, please note that this guy is a subset of the sample space. For example, if you see in this case, the sample space is head and tail. This head is a sample uh, is a subset of the sample space. So my event is always a subset of sorry, this guy is the symbol subset of sample space. For example, when we throw uh, when a die is thrown, what is the event of the number greater than four? So in this case, event number greater than four will be five and six because when you throw a die, you get one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is nothing but my sample space, and this is my event. Correct. We also know what is mutually exclusive events. Uh, two events A and B are mutually exclusive. Please note we talk about mutually exclusive events only. So two events are mutually exclusive if occurrence of one of them excludes the occurrence of another. That means if you draw a set di uh, Venn diagram, you will see that A and B are non-intersecting. They don't intersect. They don't occur simultaneously. For example, I'll say that a throw of die, my odd outcome is event A and even outcome is event B, right? So in that case, if you see my event A has values 1, 3, 5 and odd and even will be like 2, 4, 6. So if you see there is no common between these two sets. So they are mutually exclusive sets, correct? And exhaustive events, you have a lot of events you add together and that event, if that forms a sample space, that is called exhausted events. For example, when you throw a die, you get, let's suppose event A is all even outcome and event B is all odd outcome. Then you say that if you see A will have even that is number two, four, six, and B will have odd outcome that is one, three, five. You add these two, you add these two, what you get is one, two, three, four, five, six. And you see this guy is nothing but my sample space. So you add n number of events and make sure that if you add all of them, the output what you get is sample space, then those events are called exhaustive events. n number of events that covers the whole sample space. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.